Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2023 Ford Bronco Sport and we're going to be showing you how to install the ETBC7 kit, which is our universal wiring for 4-pole and 7-pole. This kit's going to give you the ability to tow a trailer that has a 7-pole on it or a 4-pole on it. Um, this is really nice because no matter if you're going to rent a trailer, you don't have to worry about it having one or the other or having to carry a converter with you. Adding a seven way to your Bronco Sport is going to give you the ability to tow trailers with brakes. Uh, the reason why that's so important is because there's going to be other functions other than your standard four pole that you're going to need when towing a trailer with brakes. Um, you're going to need a 12 volt line coming back and a brake line. The last one is going to be your reverse light, uh, which you don't necessarily need unless you have a trailer that has uh, like a small boat trailer or something where you have a reverse lockout. Uh, but otherwise, it, you're just going to need the brake signal and the 12 volt. This kit is going to be compatible with a lot of different brake controllers. We decided to go with the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite for this car because it has a very, very clean installation. The knob is, is very small. Um, it's about the size of a, of a dime. And it can be mounted pretty much anywhere because the control module has to be mounted behind the uh, steering column. Most other brake controllers have to be mounted on a certain plane in order to work correctly, but the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite can be mounted anywhere uh, that you decide is best fit. The last important things that this kit will come with is going to be your circuit breakers. They will mount underneath the hood and they're designed to protect your vehicle's wiring if you have any back feed from your trailer's wiring. It's not going to affect anything in your vehicle. Those will protect it. Um, the most difficult part of this process is really going to be running the power wire and brake wire from here at the back of the vehicle to the front underneath the hood and your brake wire will need to go pass through your firewall into your footwell of the driver's side. Um, with that being said, we'll go ahead and show you how to do it now. To start our wiring, we're going to need to remove some of these screws off the back in order to pull the panel back so that we can see what's behind here and we can get to the existing wiring. We're using a seven millimeter socket to remove these bolts. To get our factory four pole off of the factory bracket, we'll need to pull down. Uh, you may have to do a combination of pulling out on the plastic and pulling down, but we'll try to work it off. There we go. We'll pull it over here to the side so we can work with it. We started with a long bracket which you can find on our website. We cut off about half of it and then we screwed the top of it into um, our pre-mounted bracket from Ford. And then we attached our seven way to the bracket that will come in your seven way kit. Then we ran our wiring along the side here, made our four pole connection. You'll just plug the four pole on the back side of the uh, seven way into the four pole on your vehicle and then we ran our ground wire up to a spot on the frame use a self tapper that comes in your kit we ended up having to put a little extension on it with some white wire that we had you just want to make sure it's about the same thickness uh, but we got our ground there we connected the black wire to the black wire on our seven pole and the white wire in our duplex to the blue wire and the way we ran those up, we'll eventually zip tie those up to something safe up in our bumper. But we ran our duplex up, you can see it here. You wanna stay away from anything hot or moving. So we'll come back and put some zip ties on this. Ran it over, um, above our spring, above our other body mount. And then we came down, you can see right here. And then we took all these fasteners out of this underbody panel and you're able to just slide the wire up inside of here. And then we came up to the front, took these two screws out, and that's gonna take a Torx bit head, pop those out, and then fished a fish wire down from our engine bay, and it came out here. We taped it off and drug it up into the engine bay. This is where our wire ran up through our engine bay. We ran it up. Uh, we took this one bolt out, ran it underneath here, just so that it keeps its nice clean look. And then we took one of our circuit breakers and installed it here under the engine bay. 
we just used the self tappers in the kit, self tapped it into the frame. And the larger of the three are, is going to be the 40 amp. That's what we're gonna use for our 12 volt line, which is your black wire coming from your duplex. And then we'll take that same, uh, another extension of black wire and run it over to the positive post of the battery. Next thing that we did is we ran our spare duplex wire. I stripped all the gray uh, jacketing off of it so that we know the difference. Uh, but we ran the spare wiring through a grommet on the uh, the firewall. It's going to have a little nib sticking out, kind of looks like a fingertip. We just cut the tip off back here. I was able to get my hand back in there and cut it off. And then went inside and fish wired these wires out, then cut them to length. And then we came over to our circuit breakers and made our other connections. So the black wire coming from inside of our vehicle is going to come to the 20 amp auxiliary side of our circuit breaker and then the battery side will go over to the positive post and then again with the the black wire coming from our duplex from the back of our vehicle will go to our auxiliary because that's going to our 12 volt signal um, at our seven way and then ran another jumper wire from our battery signal on this um, circuit breaker over to our battery we're gonna to wait to make these connections till we have everything else wired up. Find a place for a switch to go. This is gonna be the most important part of it uh, because there's a lot of places that these switches are not gonna fit. We ended up finding a pretty good place on our switch panel here. Over to the right, this knob, you wanna do two things. You wanna see if the knob itself is gonna fit, which it should fit perfect right in there. And then we also pulled the panel off to look behind it and we have more than enough space that we don't have to worry about it. If you were to mount it a little lower, you'd have to worry about some plastic panels or if you decided you wanted it on the center console, um, a lot of people like to install them near their cup holders because their hands are there anyway. So in the case of emergency, they know their button's right there. Um, but we're gonna mount ours on the switch panel and we'll show you how to do it. You can see the mark we made on the back side of this instrument panel we're going to take a very very small pilot hole and drill a hole to start with and then we'll move up in size to the size recommended by red arc now we use this step bit to get to this point we're going to continue to use it till we get to that outer edge uh, we did use the 25 64 drill bit to see our determined uh, ending hole size but we found that this plastic is biting a little too hard on a standard drill bit. So we'll use a stepper bit to get a little further along. And we'll finish it off with our 25 64. We'll take a, a knife or a small file and clean up these edges a little bit. And we'll take our guide sticker that comes in your kit. And you wanna make sure it's centered over your hole and straight up and down too. Now we'll take our connector, slide it up on the back side you just want to make sure this this dial is turned all the way to the left before putting your switch on. And we'll take this clear nut and thread it down onto our connector there. With our dial turned all the way to the left, we can now put our button on. You just want to make sure it's straight on this tab at the top. And you want to also make sure it still clicks. To get your control module in place, you'll just want to find a sturdy place to either zip tie it or use self tappers to tap it into place. It is not recommended to zip tie it to any wiring or anything that's moving. It needs to know its orientation. It can be mounted in any orientation, but it will have to learn what orientation it, it's in. Um, in our 
Bronco Sport here, there is a panel underneath here, but right on top, there's a nice flat surface. Before we get this zip tied in place, we're going to make our wiring connections to make it a lot easier on ourselves. So we'll connect the uh, harness that has the four wires coming out of it, and then your remote wire will go into the other side. Now we can stick this back up in place and we'll zip tie it. Now we are gonna make our connections for the Red Arc brake controller. We started with the blue and black wires coming from our Red Arc. We connected it to the white and black wire that we ran from our engine bay. The black will connect to black and the blue will connect to the white, which is going back to our seven way. And then we took the white wire from our Red Arc controller and grounded it to the firewall using a self-tapping screw and a ring terminal. And then the most difficult connection is going to be the connection to our brake light signal, which is a purple with white stripe. Uh, there will be two wires and it is on this light blue connector that you can see right there. There's gonna be two wires into the same plug. You'll need to cut those wires, tie them together, and then run your red wire from your Red Arc controller into that. For the white wire coming from our ETBC7 on the back of our vehicle, we'll wanna connect that to the blue wire on our brake controller. Now with all our wires bundled up underneath, the remote wire, we did just take a couple zip ties, um, tie up some extra, some of that extra slack. Uh, we can make our final connection inside the cab, which is gonna be our remote wire. So we push that into place. And now we can tuck our wires back behind there and put our panel back. Our two final connections we need to make under our hood are going to be our two 12 volt lines. We'll take off the nut off of our battery and install both of these. Well guys, with everything working properly, that's gonna do it for installation of the universal four and seven pole wiring kit on our 2023 Bronco Sport.